Welcome, students of the Book of Acts. We hope that you've enjoyed this study that we've had together at Clarksville First United Methodist Church. For those of you who don't attend the, this church or who aren't members here uh, with us, participating in worship and the life of the body of Christ regularly, uh, you've been our guests and we've been very glad to have you. So thanks so much for those that have joined in for five weeks. And so we are here on the last week, week six of a six-week study on the book of Acts, from Easter to Pentecost and beyond. Uh, we hope that you have enjoyed this experience. We hope that you have grown spiritually, that you've been enriched, that you know the Bible better and the growth of the early church a little bit better. And we also hope that through this study, you know Jesus better. We chose the book of Acts originally because it was primitive, and suddenly we were in a kind of primitive church situation, uh, distancing, videoing, uh, trying to wonder uh, what the ministries of the church would look like in the days ahead, just like it was in the book of Acts. We also chose the book of Acts because the Gospels end with Easter, with the resurrection of Jesus, and in the liturgical calendar, this part of the year where we were was approaching Easter. And so now we are approaching Pentecost, which is May 31st, 2020. We journeyed with the apostles in the growth of the early church at the same time of the year, if you will, as uh, we have found ourselves in. So we thought it was a great study. And again, we hope that you have enjoyed it and that you have grown from it. I'd like to summarize for you uh, the experience that we've had together. We've gone from these apostles, they were disciples, who actually stared into heaven at Jesus' ascension, and an angel had to say, what are you all staring at? Uh, the Lord has gone and he'll come again, uh, implying that there's work to be done. From there, we saw this same group empowered boldly at Pentecost. And there were signs and there were wonders. But then the next phase was we saw them take the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth. And so with the book of Acts, the gospel has gone uh, up through Syria. It's gone to some islands. It's gone across Asia Minor into Greece. And one apostle has actually gone so far as Rome. So I'd like in this last video, our last week together, to share with you a reminder of where we have come. And I'd like to use a PowerPoint to do this, to provide a visual aid for you. We framed this study as story, mission, and identity. First, the story of the early church can be seen in the story of this group of apostles, but also in the individual apostles. Story was where we began. It was the author, Luke, who wrote in Acts 1, 1 to 3, the former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles who he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them through forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to God. This same Luke, who's opening the book of Acts to Theophilus, is, of course, the same Luke. We saw that in week one together that wrote the book of Luke. And in fact, when you start the book of Luke, you can see a kind of parallel purpose for writing as well as the address to this figure, Theophilus. And we also saw in week one that that helps us to link the author of Luke and Acts as this one historical figure, Luke. Second of all, in our journey together through the book of Acts, we knew that mission would be a significant component, a theme to the book, but also part of the motivation for the life of the apostles and the work that they had to do. The mission of the early church was to share the gospel and to navigate the many challenges that arose. The gospel was the fulfillment of the Old Testament promise of a Messiah, which of course the Jews resisted. The gospel was the resurrection of Jesus, which we saw the Athenian philosophers and the Sadducees resist. 
The gospel was repentance from sin, which all people themselves tend to resist. Our key verse for mission together was Acts 1.8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. The mission of the apostles and the other disciples took them around Jerusalem, into Samaria and Gaza, across Asia Minor, into Macedonia and Greece, and eventually to Rome. For example, looking at Paul's journeys, we normally divide them into four journeys, and we call them missionary journeys. Here in this map of Paul's first missionary journey, we see him leaving from Antioch, and he and Barnabas go to Cyprus, and then they go to the mainland, to this peninsula of modern Turkey we call Asia Minor. You'll recognize some of those cities there, including another Antioch. It's easy to confuse them if you jump around in the narrative. Uh, but this is Antioch of Pisidia. And then eventually all the way to Derby when he turns around and returns to Antioch. On Paul's second missionary journey, he travels again from Antioch on the right-hand side. This time, he doesn't go to Cyprus. You remember Barnabas and he divided, and Barnabas returned to his home island. Paul took the mainland and went across Asia Minor, and right in the center of the map, about Acts chapter 16, there was this great event in which Paul wanted Bithynia, which you see that to the north, but the Lord closed that area, and he got a vision of a man of Macedon saying, come over. And so Paul from Troas crossed over, again, not part of his original plan, but God's plan, into Macedonia, where he had some of those great experiences that we, we are familiar with, that we studied, and some of the key people uh, that become instrumental for his ministry. And so he moves down, going south along the eastern side of Macedonia and Achaia. Well, these are Greece now. All the way down to Athens on the bottom right of the peninsula. And then just to the left you see Corinth. That's the southernmost city that we went with Paul to. But then he goes over to Ephesus and Asia Minor and eventually returns down to Jerusalem and back to Antioch. On Paul's third missionary journey he essentially follows the same path he returns to these churches to encourage them, to instruct them, of course making new disciples along the way. But he goes through Troas to Macedonia, down to Corinth, and then uh, we think that he returned back that way. And then finally in Paul's fourth missionary journey was one that he did not design at all. In fact, in this missionary journey, he is a prisoner and he is limited. He doesn't have the freedom that he had before. But they sail around Cyprus, and they go to Crete, and Paul tells them that they should winter there, but the captain doesn't. They go on into the Mediterranean, and they end up shipwrecked on Malta. Eventually, Paul goes to Rome, and the last chapter in the book of Acts is Paul in ministry in Rome. And so we traveled with the apostles across the globe, as the gospel went forth. And third of all, a theme for us was identity. Acts 2, 4 to 7 describes not a ideal church, not a utopian church only, but also the church in the book of Acts empowered by the Spirit, Acts 2, 42 and following. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers, then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together, and had all things in common, and sold their possessions and good, and divided them among all, as anyone had need. So continuing gladly with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Here you see 
uh, the early church sharing with one another, building up one another. Uh, this is an ideal for us, and it's a way for us to model our own church. Uh, one of the activities that we had together was to think about how the contemporary church could be better and stronger. I hope that you thought about uh, some of the mission trips we take internationally, or the thrift store that is here, uh, or the helping hands, the, the many ways in which uh, we support one another as Christians in the body of Christ. That was part of their mission, but also part of their identity together. And so the lesson of Acts for us is that the Holy Spirit is empowering us because of Easter, through Pentecost, and even beyond Pentecost. We can trust him to empower and guide us, even in different ways than he did then, to promote the gospel message and to live as a gospel community, if you will. And so this takes us to the end of the book of Acts. I hope you saw those three themes kind of constantly recurring throughout the book of our study together. I hope you liked uh, seeing how Peter grew, because in the Gospels, he's one that doesn't seem to grow very quickly. I hope you liked the ministry of John and James, the, the sons of Zebedee, who in the Gospels uh, were interested, or at least their mother was, of each of them having a throne on either side of Jesus. Well, here there doesn't seem to be that self-interest at all. And in particular, James, whose voice we don't have in Acts, is executed by Herod Agrippa as the first apostle to die. And then you get introduced to Paul in the book of Acts. And here you see a person who wasn't one of the original 12, but you did see one who uh, called himself apostle. His encounter with Jesus on the road to Damascus kind of counted as Jesus confronting him like he confronted Matthew or like he called Peter. And then Paul, of course, takes the gospel to the uttermost parts of the earth more than any other apostle in the book of Acts. And so that concludes our study together of the book of Acts, except it doesn't. Uh, because we have only completed week five, and this is week six. What we have completed is our reading of the book of Acts. And of course, all of you have read every week. Uh, in this case, what we have is in this last week, an opportunity. We have an opportunity to think about Acts a little bit more. Maybe revisit the application questions from the first five weeks and begin to think about who we are as a local church or who we are as a corporate church, uh, what ministries we're missing, what ministries we might be over-focused on. Uh, that's possible from time to time. Maybe people can ask themselves, how can our church be more like the book of Acts? Or maybe individuals might ask themselves, you know, how can I be less comfortable? How can I be even less routine and more sacrificial like I saw in the life of the apostles? Or like we saw in the book of Acts with the local community church. A link is available for you for this sixth week. And you have two tasks. Uh, you call it homework. The teacher is telling you you have two assignments that you should do. Uh, this will take us beyond Acts. The first one is that you should read any New Testament epistle by an apostle. This could be by Paul, author of Romans, Corinthians, and Galatians, Ephesians, all the way to Philemon. Or this could be the book of James. Or it could be 1st or 2nd Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. You may not realize it, but the books of Paul from Romans to Philemon, we're not always sure what order he wrote in, they're actually in order from longest to shortest. And so if you want to read really f long, read Romans, and if you don't, uh, move towards Philemon. Really, Ephesians in the middle is a about the same length that we read each week in our Apostle study. James, this book, five chapters, is by the half-brother of Jesus, we believe. This is the James that you met in Acts 15 at the Jerusalem Council. He seems to be head of the church as the apostles move to the uttermost parts of the earth. That is the church in Jerusalem. 
and then 1st and 2nd Peter by the Apostle Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John by John. So if you want to read from the Word this week, choose one of these epistles. And remember that this author was one of the characters in Acts, uh, one of the apostles who was doing the work of ministry and leading in the life of the church. The second assignment for you is actually on this PDF link is to consider the journey beyond the book of Acts of the apostles to wonder about the apostolic ministries. Now this isn't Bible study, but as the author of this book, I like to think it's a very close second uh, to the reading of the word. I'm, of course, just kidding. Uh, I authored this book about the journey of the apostles after the New Testament, and some of this material is in the link. You might wonder, where did Peter die, and where did he go? Or what about Simon the Zealot? What do we even know about him? You might have heard that the apostles mostly all died a martyr. And so, with just some interesting material more than anything else, uh, this week six will let you see what history tells us as best we can know about the ministry of the apostles after the book of Acts. For them, it takes them from Easter to Pentecost and beyond. For us, it just lets us think about their ministry beyond as we move from Easter to Pentecost beyond in our own generation, in our own lives. Uh, you may think also that this demurring author has two copies of this book on his PowerPoint, almost like a subliminal suggestion that you should buy one for you and one for your neighbor. Uh, actually, I'd like to offer to everyone who's watching this, or anyone who studied each of the weeks, we could make that a criteria if we wanted, to email Jennifer Boydston and simply say, I'd like to be in the drawing for a complimentary copy of Quest for the Historical Apostles by my Acts teacher. I tell her that you've been watching over these weeks and you've been studying, and then we're going to let Jennifer find a creative way to find a, a winner for a copy of this book. And that can be, of course, uh, delivered to you, even if I have to deliver it myself, unless you're the people studying in Oklahoma, in which case we will, of course, just mail it to you. This could be interesting for you just to consider the ministry of the apostles beyond the New Testament. In one map, let me tell you, these regions represent fairly credible possibilities of where the apostles went in the ancient world beyond Acts. The two exceptions are Britain and Gaul. Uh, those legends probably are not true. And so if you unimagine those, then the rest actually have a good historical basis to them. I hope that you'll find week six interesting, an interesting time uh, to read an epistle, to reflect more about the church, and then also to consider the ministry of the apostles to the uttermost parts of the, of the earth. This fulfills the great commission command that Jesus gave them, and they did it well. That same command comes to us, and it is up to us to do it just as well also. Thanks so much again for joining us these weeks. Thanks so much for worshiping with us, for reading with us, for the emails, for some conversations that we've had together. I hope that you're blessed by this. I hope you continue to be blessed by the Lord. Thanks so much.